Well, hello, everybody. Welcome in to the first uh, webinar of the year for De Facto Trial Works. I want to thank you all for uh, being here today and uh, taking your time to come and learn a few things. Uh, I want to go over a little bit of what we're going to do uh, today. Uh, you will notice in Webinar Jam here in your area, you're going to have some uh, little red dots there uh, that enable you to have a chat area uh, where you can send a chat message. I'm going to look at those uh, toward the end of the webinar. Uh, also, there is going to be a replay of this. So if you have to duck out, that's OK. Uh, the only thing is there's a couple of offers that I'm going to give toward the end of this. Uh, one of them has to do with some educational stuff and the other uh, has to do with um, going to a Zoom. So at the end of this webinar, I'm going to be posting a link to a live Zoom where if you've not used Zoom before or you want to learn how to use Zoom based on some of the things that we're going to talk about today and you want to try some of those things with some live people, uh, we're going to have that Zoom going and ready for you uh, today. So as soon as this is over, uh, we're going to be able to do that. Now, another area you have is you can request to speak. And so when I go to the question and answer section of this and you want to say something, uh, as long as you have a mic that works, you can hit on the speak button and I will then uh, unmute you and enable you to come in and speak. So uh, now that we have all that out of the way, uh, I want to uh, go into, first of all, we're going to talk today about Zoom, OK, but there are so many other platforms that are available out there for you. And we're going to do some live stuff today with Zoom. I'm going to go through some tips and tricks uh, that I use. Uh, we're going to take a look at some things we did in trial. But one of the things that I had the ability uh, to do last week was I got to talk with my friend Paul Knoll over at Precise and Paul just finished a trial. His company did where they had a ton of people in this in this uh, uh, remote hearing. And I wanted to bring him in and ask him some questions about that. So uh, I've asked him to he requested to speak. And so I've given him permission. And I want to know if he's able to hear me. Paul, are you able to hear me? And if he's not able to hear, I'm going to move on. There's Paul right there. Uh, Paul, how you doing, buddy? You need to unmute. Make sure you're unmute. I think that was uh, probably the uh, question of the year or statement of the year was you're on mute. So, Paul, can you hear me? Gotcha. He is right there. Good. Hey, Paul, welcome in. Uh, glad to have you here. And I want to talk about something. Paul, you guys had a case uh, over at Precise that required you to use something other than Zoom. Talk about what you guys used and the advantages and disadvantages of that. Sure, sure. Thanks for having me, Rob. Great to see you again. Um, so we were doing a case in the Southern District of Texas Bankruptcy Court, uh, something where the judge put out that they would be using GoToMeeting uh, for the entire, it ended up being a 13-day remote trial. Every, every single party was remote, um, but something where had some familiarity in the past prior to the pandemic. We were, I was personally a big GoToMeeting user, uh, but then with the pandemic and Zoom kind of became the de facto platform. Um, and we made the switch internally just because it was a little more user friendly with Zoom um, for, for the end user experience. But the judge was using GoToMeeting across the board. Um, for this particular instance, the judge was really a master of his domain. Um, he was in full control uh, as the admin. It's not like he had to go to tip staff every time there was an issue. He was extremely proficient in it, which just helped make everything a, a world difference smoother. Um, you know, is inevitable at some point, usually beginning of each day where different participants would have issues trying to connect and then this and that. He was able to walk them through uh, and get everything squared away and get everything up and running. Um, the, ju the judge did. They did not use the go to medio go to medium um, audio function. What they did is they used the courts teleconference system which gave the judge much more control over being able to mute and unmute participants. Uh, so the audio and video was out of sync a little bit, which, you know, it was like watching the old Kung Fu movies, as everybody's always said, 
Uh, but you just kind of grew accustomed to it. It really wasn't much. Fun. What challenges did you guys face having that many participants? Because there were over a hundred people in this thing, correct? Yeah. Yeah. The biggest thing initially uh, at the onset was just making sure you get into the meeting. They were initially using, um, I think it was the go to meeting pro, which limits up to 250 participants that are allowed in and meeting. So that was the first thing was just making sure you could get in. Eventually they did switch over to the enterprise version, which allows up to 1000, maybe 3000 participants. Um, but that was, that was the biggest thing. And just kind of that, that little issues with um, when people do need to speak, they have to press star five. Um, so that became an issue again, like you said, kind of you're on mute, um, be, but nothing, nothing too out of the ordinary. One thing was that uh, between each direct and cross examination, the judge would need to switch the controls to whoever the active presenter was. So the right. first couple of days, um, you know, asking, letting him know uh, who the presenter was going to be. And a couple of days into it, you didn't even need to, to raise your hand anymore. He was, again, a master of his domain and kind of flipping and toggling as needed. Did the bandwidth stay pretty steady with that many people inside of a remote uh, hearing like that? Yeah, there were there were no issues at all. You know, again, that's usually more of an issue on the end user if they're trying to use Wi-Fi and their kids are streaming uh, their homeschooling or video games or whatever it might be. But for the most part, we stayed hardwired Internet access and, and we didn't have any issues at all on our side. Well, and let me also say I've gotten a couple chat messages that said that my presentation is uh, frozen. And if that's the case, um, I don't know what that bandwidth load or issue is, but. Uh, hopefully it comes back and you're able to see everything. If not, you'll definitely be able to see it on the replay. How did you manage, Paul, working with uh, a team that large? I know you guys had a lot of people on your side. How did you manage that? So that really was the biggest difference uh, for this particular case. There were seven different partners that each had their own team of associates, uh, experts that they were working with. Uh, there's that, you know, there's nothing quite like being in the war room together with, with the team. Uh, you're able to establish that rapport and build that trust with the team. Um, you know, we're always trying to get our clients just to do some sort of prep. We did have a great rapport with some of the partners that we had worked with in the past, but some of the newer partners and mainly the associates that we hadn't worked with, um, you know, trying to get them to, to spend a little time to doing prep um, and just make ourselves um, available for the associates, you know, work until, two or three o'clock in the morning in the war room, you're always able to help shoulder, uh, help them carry the water and shoulder some of the load. A little more difficult to do in a remote setting. The last question that I have, tell me about graphics. I, I had a chance to talk with Matt who did that trial in your office and he told me something that he dealt with and I never realized this, but they took the graphics from 16.9 down to a 4.3. Talk about how that mattered with a remote thing when viewing graphics. Sure. So it was something where uh, the accounting experts, they had their own internal resources that were mainly creating the uh, charty graphy stuff. It was going through the different forecasting models and, and such. So we were given uh, the PowerPoints right on the eve of their testimony. Uh, there wasn't any fancy animations or transitions. So we were able to PDF them and zoom in as needed and trial director. But it was something where it was a four to three aspect ratio and our initial kind of knee jerk reaction was, well, so it should really be 16 by nine just to get the, the most optimal. But it ended up working out. It just gives you some the letterbox banding on the side, gives you a little more space to work with. And again, getting to the end users that aren't necessarily as proficient with the, the different platforms. Sometimes you get the uh, video over top of the presentation screen. So that gives you a little bit of real estate there where the videos might not necessarily always be covering up uh, the, the presentation material. So in the end, it worked out pretty well for uh, for this instance. Well, Paul, thank you very much for coming on and talking with us about that. I always like hearing what other people are doing out in the industry, especially when you're using something maybe other than Zoom. And of course, you guys were using the GoTo meeting there. So thank you so much for coming in and talking with us, Paul. Thanks that. for having me. Pleasure. Okay. So as you, you can see, Paul Knoll there, uh, who did the, the, the Zoom remote type trial, did it with the uh, GoToMeeting. And I think you can actually uh, eject right there, turn your cam off and your audio, and you're good to go. So, 
which moves me into over in your white window there. I have pushed a PDF file to you guys. Feel free to download that. Take a look at it. It has hyperlinks in it. So if you click on one of those items, it will take you to the Amazon place where you can order it. What I did was I took everything that I use for a Zoom setup, uh, everything that I use for remote trial. How am I getting this sound? How are we getting a background that has a depth of field? Um, what lighting are we using? Things like that. Um, it's all in there for you. If you need to get some more equipment, that's probably what you have to do is take a look at something like that. And it shows you uh, what I'm using. Feel free to download that file. You'll see different things pop up over in that side as we go. So I just finished a trial and a lot of times uh, one of the issues that comes up is how do you communicate with your lawyer? How does your lawyer communicate with you when you're in trial? How does that work? How does the lawyer tell you what to do? Because there's no laser pointer for you to really look at anymore. And how do they direct you on where to go? I really think a lot of that has to be set up on the front side this is this whole webinar is designed to give you the pieces to prep yourself up to be ready to not have failure. And that's what we're doing right now is we're going to go through some of that. But I had a lawyer who um, you really need to educate your lawyers on the difference between call out and highlight. Uh, in this particular trial, I had a lawyer that kept saying highlight when actually what he meant was blow it up and let me see it. And I want to let you see some of this. The judge was actually streaming this to YouTube. A lot of you uh, may have had the opportunity to click on one of the links on LinkedIn where I was posting this live every day. And I want you to watch how I communicated with that lawyer and how he communicated with me. Although remember in Zoom, you have a little bit of a delay back to the other side. So when you put something up back to the other side, there may be a little bit of a delay. So let me show you what happened in that particular instance. Thank you. Uh, Rob, would you put up Planets Exhibit 50, please? 5 0. -oh. Blow it up a little bit. Have you seen this letter before, Mr. El Chami? It, and by the way, is it El Chami or El Shami? However you prefer, sir. Well, I'd prefer to call you the way you want to be called. I'm happy to call both. Both? Yes, sir. Okay. I apologize if I've been saying it wrong, but I found out last night that it might be El Shami. Um, have you, for you to say? Okay, thank you. It, have you seen this letter before uh, from Mr. Scott to you and your father, dated May first, twenty nineteen? Uh, yes, sir. I believe I I have to see the contents, but I looks like I've seen that letter before. Did Did you get it on or about May first, twenty nineteen? Either through email or fax or both. It's we're going off memory now. I don't recall, but I'm sure we did. If it was okay, and and do I do you, do you need to review the letter, or do you pretty much recall what it was? So, sir, I don't recall what this letter was. I have to review it. Like I said, at this time, we were being represented by James Ertle. James Ertle said, "Oh, this is a slam dunk summary judgment deal." Now let me switch gears here. If you'll blow that up to paragraph two, please. Now, just scroll to the bottom, please, Rob. This is the agreement between the parties. Would you agree? Next page, please. Rob, that y'all sign. Do you agree? Yes, sir. Okay, scroll back up to paragraph two, please, Rob. Now, did you write this agree? Did you complete? Uh, did you, excuse me, let me strike that. Did Jordan Zatoon? send you this agreement, uh, yes, in, a draft of it for initially. What was that? Did Jordan Zatoon send you a draft of this agreement initially? Yes, sir. Did you make changes to the draft he sent you? I just made some changes based on the, uh, I, I just inputted the budget number uh, that they gave me. I just did what they asked me to do. So I didn't change anything that wasn't asked of me. They asked me to in, it, change the installments for the budget and uh, input the initial draw that we'll be taking, but that's all I changed. I didn't change the you know, verbiage of this agreement he gave me. 
So you changed paragraph two. Is that right? Yes, as I was asked to. Rob, is it possible to put up this agreement next to Defendant's Exhibit 116, please? They are perfect. Thank you. And scroll down on 116. Okay. So what we want to do is highlight Exhibit 116, Defendant's Exhibit 116 is the template agreement that the Zatoon sent you. Is that your understanding? Yes, sir. So Rob, would you highlight paragraph two, please? On exhibit 116, I'm, that one compared to the paragraph two on the other exhibit. So the top language is the language you put in and the bottom language uh, is the language on the Zatoon template. So you can see there how we kind of did that and how that worked and how we came up with this is how we present everything. This is how you talk with me. Uh, this is how we worked. And he just said my name. That was the easiest thing for him to be able to do was to say my name, tell me what he wanted, tell me where he wanted to go. So the one thing you have to remember about Zoom is Zoom is nothing more or presenting remotely is nothing more than actually doing it in, in court. It's no different. You're sharing one screen and that is whatever your presentation screen is. So for instance, if you're in trial and you have a projector and screen or you have monitors, you're going out to those monitors. Treat your secondary monitor as that. So let's jump in and let's really look at some of this. Let's go over. I have, I am connected here via a jump desktop and I'm going to set up a Zoom meeting uh, right now that we're just going to schedule a meeting and we're going to go through the settings that you can use to make this a little easier for you as you're going in. So we'll just go in here and we're just going to type in test right here. And I'm going to set this thing for uh, three o'clock or four o'clock is fine. It doesn't matter what time you set it for. Set the duration at one hour. And right here, I don't require registration for anybody. I don't think that's something you need to do. I also don't use a personal meeting ID, although you can. If you use a personal meeting ID, that's something that just is the meeting ID that you can give somebody. So if you want to memorize that number, which I actually will here because this is how we're going to go in. So we're going to say 604538. And the last is 1851. That's the number that you would give to somebody to come into your meeting. You can also set up a passcode if you want. So I'll just set this one as test as well. Uh, that'll be my passcode. Or you can set a waiting room. Now, the difference is when you have a waiting room, you're going to have to authorize people to come in. But when people have a passcode, they can automatically come in. You're going to have to require, you're going to be required to put one of these things in one way or the other. Then down here, I always allow video for the participant and the host. And I always allow audio to be both because I want people to be able to use the phone or use their computer audio to come in. Now, right here on your meeting options, uncheck the mute participants upon entry. I would much rather the user be able to uh, mute and unmute as they wish. I don't want them to be bound by me. Now, if you want to have and set that up, you're going to be telling people, hey, you're on mute. You need to unmute. Automatically recording the meeting, I don't do. And you can approve or block entry from somewhere else. So if you want to block entries from other countries or other areas, you can certainly do that. And then I'm just going to click save. Now, what this does is this is going to give us this meeting information right here that we can go in and we can copy the invitation and send it to somebody and things like that. So we're ready to go. But what I'm going to do is go back into my meetings here and notice that now that I've saved it, I have this one test scheduled. So I'm going to go ahead and start this meeting and I'm going to have it launched as if I'm the court, for instance, over here. So one thing that you need to do as well is if you have this, you need to be using the Zoom client and not just the webinar. So I'm going to hit download now. And what that's going to do is that's going to save on my machine the actual Zoom 
executable. So this is the client. We're going to launch the client and we're going to launch this meeting. So at this time, notice now that we're going to join with computer audio. Take a look. You see my office coming in from another thing. I'm going to stop the video there and I'm also going to mute this uh, so that we don't have to worry about it. So this would be, uh, for instance, our judge. OK, so now let's go join this meeting from my computer right here. So let's go in and let's go ahead and join this meeting. So I'm going to uh, launch a new uh, window here for uh, Google Chrome, and I'm going to bring this over to right here so we can see this. And now what I'm going to do is hit zoom.us and we'll go into Zoom. Now at this point, I'm going to join a meeting and I'm going to enter that personal ID. So we're going to say 604 and 538 and 1851. And we're going to click join. Now at that time, we're going to open Zoom meetings and let that launch. And this will launch the meeting. Now we got to enter the passcode. Passcode is test T. Let's get that right here. T E S T. And we're going to click join meeting. Now, once we join that meeting, this is another webcam. So I'm going to go ahead and join with video. And now I have joined. I'm going to mute this so that we don't hear it. I want you guys just hearing my audio. We don't need to worry about audio there. So this is what the, what we see. And let's go over now and let's see what the judge would see. So let's look at this jump desktop again. This is what the court would see, for instance. So that's their Zoom. OK, now, one thing I want to tell you is on view right here. This is going to matter in just a little bit because you don't want to overlap with something. So let's go ahead and go back into our Zoom. And let's do a share screen at this point. So I'm going to share a screen and all I'm going to share is my screen too. So I'm going to click on share right here and I'm going to share that up. Now, take a look at what we have on our screen here. Screen two is what's being shared. And you can see that I have that green box around that. That's my presentation screen. But let's go back to our laptop and let me pull up on cue. Now, what I like to do is I like to take my active speaker icon right here and I like to move it somewhere that's not in the way. Also, these are your screen controls right here uh, that you're using. I like to take those and you can hide the floating meeting controls. So when you hide that, if you need to pull it back up, you simply push escape and it'll come back up there for you. OK, so we're just going to hide the meeting controls. And right now, what we're sharing is our secondary monitor at this point. So I'm going to hide the meeting controls right here and let's go over and look and see what the judge sees. There is what the judge is seeing. OK, so with that going right there like that, let's go up into their view. This is where you want to have people on the other side. They need to have a side by side gallery or side by side speaker. And the reason for that is because you don't want to overlap when you do a call out. You don't want to overlap this area of the screen. Also on their end, I'm looking at the judge right now. I'm looking at the remote person. Notice they can move this up or down. So here's what this gives us the ability to do when we're presenting in Zoom. Let's go ahead and minimize this. Let's get back to where we are. And let's say that an attorney called for exhibit two, page seven. I'm going to launch this right now. I'm going to push F5. When I push F5, that goes to my external monitor. Now I'm going to give you a chance here to watch in dual monitor mode. So you see what I have here and you see what I have up here. Now, if they ask me to do a call out, I'm going to do a call out. If they ask me to do a highlight, I'm going to do a highlight. They want 275 highlighted. So I'm going to highlight that. Now, what does the court see? Let's go back to our laptop and let's see exactly what the court is seeing right now or whoever. There's what they see on their end. Notice that they're seeing the call out and they're seeing me. I'm going to take this down. I'm going to do another. Let's just do a highlight right there. And then let's do a zoom right there. And notice what's happening over in the courts area. They're seeing all this stuff. So that's how you do that. And you're not blocking anything with your meeting controls, right? So I'm going to minimize this and go back to my main screen here. You're not blocking anything. If I push escape right here, I can bring those tools back up 
And that's what I want to do to be able to stop my share. So when I stop sharing, if we go back, notice I'm back to what the court sees right now. And I'm back to what I'm seeing right here inside of my Zoom control. If I want to share the screen again, I go share screen. I share screen two. I click share and I'm back off to the races again. Notice in a dual monitor mode, I'm back up and running where I can just go in and make this thing happen. So it works out really well if you know how to set this up because a lot of people are scared of Zoom. Well, all you're sharing is one screen. Don't ever share this screen. Don't ever share your laptop. Simply share the external monitor right here and always know that when you have that green box right there, that is what's getting shared out to the court. Also, the stop share button right here over on our laptop. When you're ready to stop sharing or they're done talking about an exhibit, go ahead and stop the share so things can get back to where they are. If you need to start sharing again, you simply say share screen, select screen two, hit share, boom, we're going, we're off to the races again. So that's what happens when you're dealing with that. And it works out really, really well for everybody when you use those kind of tools and you understand where your buttons are. And I'm going to be completely 100% honest with you right now. And that is that when you are using Zoom or you're using any tool like this, muscle memory of knowing where things are. It's the same with trial presentation, right? It's the same when you're presenting in trial. You've got to know your hotkeys. You've got to know where you're going. You've got to know what buttons you need to push. And that comes from muscle memory. It is the exact same with Zoom. Uh, so when you leave a meeting, like I just left the meeting over there and we're going to look at our laptop now. And over here, I'm going to end it for uh, the court session and we'll just hit end meeting for all right there. And that's exactly how that works. So that way you don't have to worry about whether or not, um, you know, it, it's going, okay? You know what you're sharing. You should only share one monitor. That makes things a lot easier, I think, for everybody when that's all you're doing is just sharing uh, those things out because it matters. Um, and so, um, so, Chris Reynolds asked why share the screen and not the program on Q live. So there's a good reason for that. I, I like to share the screen rather than the program. I will say, uh, so you know, this, um, I will say that when I share the screen, it just gives me the ability to move things around. Or if they had like a word document that they were going to be pulling up, or if they had something that wasn't necessarily in on Q for me, uh, Chris, then I would, I would do that, right? I would go ahead and be able to put that up there by sharing the screen. Now, uh, Andrea asks a great question. Is sharing the screen better than sharing the software? I don't know. I will say that the resources for sharing the software are less than for sharing the screen. They tax you on your System resources, they tax you a lot less when you're sharing just the uh, program and not necessarily the monitor. I just like to go ahead and share that monitor just like I would at trial because at trial, I'm not just sharing uh, the software. I'm actually, people are seeing that secondary monitor. So I try to do it exactly as I would do it in trial with the same things available and the same things that we can or can't do. So Next, I want to talk about also do not forget when you're using Zoom or when you're using any remote presentation, do not forget that graphics matter. Now, let's get something straight here. I think that um, when you're when you're when you're talking about this, uh, one of the things you have to realize is that judges are people too. And we're not talking about jury trials here because there aren't any jury trials really going by Zoom, right? I don't think they've mastered that yet. If you've done a jury trial, hit the request to speak button and tell me about it where you've had jurors in a Zoom. And I don't mean mock, I mean a binding verdict jury trial. If you've had that, let me know because I don't want to speak out of school. But don't forget that your graphics are still important.
Don't forget that the judge or the arbitrators in an arbitration or a bench trial are people too. So let's talk about that. We used graphics in this trial, and this is what the judge had to say about that. I wanted that. Um... <sighs> Uh, that timeline is that you guys, it was a very good timeline uh, that you guys did. Very well, very well done. Let me just we share. Have, sorry, Your Honor, we have one um, as well that Ms. Desarilla has prepared and I haven't sent it to you yet, but we also have a timeline. Okay. Uh, so this is what they pre presented. Uh, and it, it's very good. It's much more detailed than I really needed, but, but thank you. So as you can see there, the judge commenting on and saying thank you for sending that over. Uh, he shared his screen right there to show it with the timeline. Don't ever forget that graphics are still important. They're an important part of what you're doing. The judge is human too. So they are swayed one way or the other <clears throat> by what they're seeing on the screen and how those graphics can be used. And speaking of graphics and the way that graphics work and the way you can use graphics, um, my great friend, Jonah Bloom, who has been a friend of mine for years and years and years, sent me a book uh, a while back as a gift. And uh, one of my one of my favorite books, uh, it's called Presentation Zen. And this book is designed to teach you uh, some things about presentation. It's by Gar Reynolds, uh, and you can find this uh, maybe on Amazon or uh, Barnes and Noble, something like that. Great book uh, about uh, presenting graphics and how to develop something. So if you're not a graphic designer, uh, but you know you're in a pinch here because we're working on Zoom, and you need to develop something, a book like this. Uh, is, is great to have handy. Uh, another book that is probably the Bible of graphics is Images with Impact by Kerry Ruttenberg. Uh, this can be found uh, on Amazon. Uh, you simply have to Google it. That book right there is probably one of the best uh, that's out there uh, for being in the graphic business when dealing with in court. Um, and so I think that you have to look at what is best for you and what's best for your client to uh, be able to use, right? So um, Images with Impact, a really good one, and it will teach you kind of how to do these things. And using graphics in Zoom is very important when you're doing these things. So I kind of showed you, these are the little tips and tricks, and these are how I set things up, and this is how things work out. Um, I do want to talk right now. I've got a special offer. I always do this with my Zoom meetings. Um, anytime I'm doing any kind of a webinar or anything like that, uh, this is Trial Tech University. This is something that we started. And for the next couple hours, uh, for those of you who are here, we are going to uh, lower that rate. Normally for Trial Tech University, it is $750 for life uh, to become a member and uh, we publish content in there twice a month. Uh, there are some videos that are an hour long, some that are uh, 20 minutes, some that are 10 minutes. Uh, but I'm going to have that special offer for you guys. Feel free to hit the check it out button. That'll take you over to Trial Tech University. And we're going to knock a couple hundred dollars, a couple hundred and fifty dollars off of that for you uh, today for attending uh, this webinar. And so what I want to do now is I want to get to the Q&A section of this. Um, I want the, uh, you know, question and answer area so that we can uh, answer some questions or I can. I'm certainly not an expert at remote uh, trials. I've been doing remote stuff uh, since 2011, uh, and I believe it was probably 2010 or 11. I'm not sure. It may have been nine. Uh, that I did my first remote witness with remote jurors coming in, or with remote witnesses coming in uh, and remote attorneys coming in uh, because of a uh, snowstorm. They were uh, pretty packed in and couldn't get anywhere and the judge wanted to continue. So we did that. And of course, we did that by Skype. Uh, if there are any questions and answers, you can feel free to hit the speak button and request to speak. And I'll be glad to let you do that. And if you want to put it in the chat, feel free to put the question in chat, and I will be glad to answer that. Remember that we are um, having 
this as a replay as well. And so if you get any questions that you want answered, you can feel free to email me. Uh, the best way to reach me is Rob, R-O-B-B, at defactotrial.com. And I will be glad to do that. So I'm going to give this just uh, a minute or two uh, to be able to do that. Now, while that's happening, I'm going to go over to my laptop here and I'm actually going to log into Zoom uh, while this is happening. And uh, we're just going to close that down and we are going to launch a new window here and uh, we'll pull that new window back over and we're going to go into Zoom. So we're going to get zoom.us and once we get here, we're going to sign in. And I am going to sign in with Google and there's me and I am going to actually start the Zoom testing ground meeting, uh, which is where you're going to get to come in and test anything that you would like to test. Uh, you can do uh, over in this area. I've got it set up now. Let me tell you the password, the password for the Zoom meeting that we have set up. Let me make sure too that I am on mute here. So I want to take this back and let's go ahead and mute that. And I'm going to stop the video. Uh, the password for this is going to be webinar. So when I launch for you the Zoom link to get into this particular Zoom that I just launched, the password is webinar. You're going to be able to come in there. There's no structure. There's just going to be people. You share your screen, try different things, say, hey, does this look good? How do I sound? Things like that. Uh, so Mike, uh, Mike Palermo asked, do you recommend a second setup, laptop and secondary monitor signed up, signed into Zoom trial for backup? Yes, uh, I do for multiple reasons. Uh, number one, failure, equipment failure. You're ready to boom, jump on over just like you would be in trial. Uh, number two, um, I like the ability to be able to kind of see what's going on on another side. So I want to see what everybody else is seeing. If you're a participant in that, which you would be here, you're working right where we're at right now. If you're on the laptop right here, you're working live. I mean, you're, you're doing your thing, but be a participant with everything muted. I want to see what's going on out there. So yeah, I, I would recommend a second setup. Uh, in case of failure, I mean, where is redundancy a bad thing? Where is that something that can get you in trouble? I mean, I, I would suggest you do it if you have uh, the bandwidth to be able to do it. Number one, uh, you want to know that your upload speeds are good. You don't want to rob Peter to pay Paul. Uh, is there a way in Zoom to let the witness manipulate, annotate your shared screen? Absolutely. You can give someone control of your screen. So when you give them that control of the screen, let's go over here. And let's look at this. If I am in my laptop and I share my screen, uh, I, I'm just going to hit share screen real quick. I'm going to share screen too. You can also, one thing I do want to tell you when you're sharing a screen down here, you can optimize for video clip and you can share your sound. So if you're going to be doing any impeachment type stuff, you'll want to do that right here with optimizing for video clip and share your system sound out. So is there a way to let them do that? Yes, you can hit share right here. I'm going to share my screen. And at this point, you can go more right here and you can give these people, you can give somebody the ability to annotate. Uh, you can annotate on your screen or when you share with somebody, you can give somebody the ability to uh, take control of your machine and, and do that. So um, that's, that's definitely something that somebody else can annotate on here. So uh, you always want to be able to let somebody else do that. You can do that through Zoom. When there are more people, you can select someone and then give that person that you've selected the ability to come in and annotate on your machine. Understand doing that, they've got some control. Uh, so you want to know how to get them out of that control as well. You don't want to keep that control up there. So with that said, I want to thank everybody for attending. This was not going to be a long webinar. It was not designed to me because Zoom is not hard. Uh, Zoom is not something that's difficult for you to be able to do. Uh, it doesn't take uh, much to understand and know. You just need to have that muscle memory. So let me go ahead again. For those of you that didn't get the equipment, I'm going to go ahead and put that up for you. Uh, there is the uh, equipment checklist if you didn't get that of what I'm using. And lastly, I want to go ahead and uh, we're going to 
if you if you want to check out Trial Tech University, go ahead and hit the check it out. I'm going to remove that offer now and I'm going to start and I'm going to publish. Take me to the Zoom link. This will take you to Zoom uh, where you can go in and you can try anything you want to try. You want to try to let somebody else annotate on your document. Uh, this is the way to do it. I'm going to be in there for however long you guys want to be in and come test out your Zoom presentation skills. There's the link. Click it. I'm going to leave that up there for about mm, 30 seconds. Then I'm going to take that down and go ahead and stop the meeting. There will be a replay of this. If you want to go back and kind of watch what we did and how we did it, you will be getting a replay into uh, your mailbox. Uh, that replay will be available for 48 hours. And so thank you all so much for coming in. If you want to come to the Zoom meeting, go ahead, click that link and come on in and check it out. Uh, if you give the witness controls, you're not able to use their mouse for other purposes. It's not ideal if you're the tech multitasking behind the scenes. That is absolutely true. Uh, Alicia just mentioned that, and that is absolutely true. You do not want to necessarily uh, let somebody uh, do that because if they do and they're annotating on your document, they also have control. And like she said, you you, you lose control of your mouse while they're doing that. So. Uh, you definitely want to uh, keep that in mind. Uh, the meeting code, there is no meeting code. The password is webinar. Let's write that in. There we go. The password for the Zoom, uh, which I spelled with an X. I didn't mean to, but that does kind of make me cool, is webinar. Uh, you didn't see the link to the webinar. Well, you, I'm going to hit remove offer and I'm going to put it back up there again. Look in the white area of the uh, area. Somebody may be able to point you to that so you can see it. Uh, there is the Zoom link. I'm going to leave that up for as long as you guys want it up there. That way we can uh, get people in. <clears throat> the Zoom webinar link is right there. I'm going to actually hit Okay. I am back again. Uh, let me, <laughs> I have no idea how that worked or how that happened, but let me go ahead and get back live with you now because, uh, that was uh, not fun. Uh, I hit the wrong button and when you hit the wrong button, uh, that's what happens. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into my, uh, attendee link here and I will update the chat. And so, uh, <laughs> let's try that again. That's a live webinar. Woohoo. I don't record these ahead of time. Uh, let me go ahead and get the participant uh, thing here. Let me hit invite and let me copy the invitation and let me throw that into the chat for anybody who wants to come into uh, the Zoom. So there it is right there. The password is, of course, webinar. Webinar is the password to get in. I'll type that. All right. Webinar is the Zoom password. And so there you go. Uh, hope to see you guys over there. We're going to end the meeting now. And thank you all so very much for being here. I'm Rob Hill with DeFacto Trial Works.